My husband and I own a lake house that we spend most of our free time at when it's warm. We go there over the winter to check on it and do any basic maintenance that's required. It's not set up for winter living. We often invite friends and family over. We have almost two acres of land and there's lots of room to park an RV or set up a tent. The house has a septic tank for the toilet. All the other water goes to a grey water tank we use for the garden and lawn. We only use biosafe products. We have a well-built and ventilated outhouse for when people are over. So last week was one where we went out to get the house ready for the spring and summer. We ordered the water truck to fill our tank. The propane guys are to fill up that tank. We ran water through the pipes to flush them out and get them ready to use. And his mum and dad showed up with his brother and his family, which would be fine except it was a cold and crappy weekend, so they wanted to avoid setting up tents and staying outside. I asked him why they were there. He said that he told them we were going out and they invited themselves out. They didn't bring much besides some sandwiches and a bunch of beer. They didn't understand why we didn't have any of the water toys ready. There was still ice on the lake. I asked my husband to tell them that we weren't prepared for guests and that they needed to leave or help. He wouldn't do it. So I left. I said I needed to run to the store. I took my car and went to the grocery store five blocks from my house. It's an Asian market with fantastic sushi. I think my husband expected me to just be going to the gas station a mile from the lake. I left him out there to prep the house and deal with his guests. He's upset now that I left without telling him that I wasn't coming back, that he had to do all the work by himself, that he had to clean the house by himself. He said his family thought I was rude not to stick around and host. I did not invite them. I told him that the house wasn't ready for guests. I told him that we didn't have enough toilet paper for eight people. He knew that we only had food for the two of us for the weekend. It's his fault and his problem. Should I have sucked it up and taken one for the team or am I the idiot? You are the idiot for not addressing the situation yourself and leaving without informing your husband that you wouldn't be back. You just left, making you look passive-aggressive at best. Now he gets to control the narrative and I expect he makes you look like you don't like them. He certainly isn't going to stop them from believing it if that's the first story they come up with. Honestly, his family seems stupid to not see the ice on the lake and still be asking about water toys. Oh well, this was a learning experience for them. Next time, you need to tell your husband that you're leaving. Still leave, just tell him. Feel free to tell everyone all at once. I'm leaving, the general store closes at 6pm, so make sure you guys get down there in time to buy food and toilet paper. Disagree, not the idiot. The yokels on here saying adults communicate yada 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 and are completely ignoring the fact that you and your husband had a plan for this weekend, his family showed up uninvited and empty-handed and you asked your husband to tell them to leave. You communicated and reinforced your needs and expectations. He declined to consider you. You don't have to tell him the consequences of his choice in advance. Sucks that he had to do the work himself but maybe next time he won't choose ingrates over his actual wife. Seriously, who shows up to an uninvited but free weekend holiday without food for everyone, including the hosts? And let me guess, they probably rarely, if ever, pitch in for utilities, cleaning supplies or fuel for the toys. My friend, people believe adults have magical powers of communication that turn every conflict into a five Kleenex episode of Oprah. Whether the person with whom they're supposed to be communicating is an unreasonable neighbor, an in-law with raging personality disorders, an abusive SO, or a floridly psychotic ex. If there is a conflict at all, OP is obviously not using their communication superpowers, as if St. Francis had refused to preach to the beasts of the wilderness. OP, not the idiot. Also, you have a husband problem. I hope you continue to refuse to make it your problem to manage his rude damn family's emotions and sense of entitlement. I, 22 male, and my girlfriend, 22 female, have been together for five years. We've been together since high school and until recently I've always considered her to be my future wife. I've even bought a ring and was planning on proposing over the coming months. Well, last weekend was my girlfriend's best friend's birthday. She and her friends booked a private lounge at a club. Obviously, I didn't go because, one, I wasn't invited, and two, I hate clubbing or anything associated with that. I was looking forward to spending an evening alone and binge-watching Netflix, while my girlfriend left around 9pm and I just crashed on the couch and watched some YouTube. Well, around 11pm, I started to feel this distinct stomach pain, the same pain you experience when someone hits you in the nuts. It wasn't bad at first and I just thought my body was playing some tricks on me, but in about five minutes, the pain just kept getting worse until I was basically stuck in the fetal position on the couch. Again, initially, I just thought the pain would go. 
The moment I tried to get up and grab my phone to inspect whatever the heck was happening to me, I just collapsed on the floor. That was probably the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Imagine being pelted in the nuts over and over again. I did manage to crawl to the table next to the couch to get my phone. I immediately tried calling my girlfriend, but she declined my call. I then texted her that something was wrong and she should come home immediately. The club she went to is about a five-minute walk from our apartment. I just put the phone down and started throwing up because of the pain. After throwing up for about a minute, it felt like the pain started to cool down a bit and I grabbed my phone again and that's when I saw her response. She just replied with a, what is it? I tried calling her again but as expected, she just declined again. I then texted her that I needed to go to the hospital now. She then asked for what and I just replied that my testicles hurt. I then just dialed for emergency services. I explained my situation to the emergency responder. She asked if there was someone who could drive me to the hospital and I stupidly said yes. I thought my girlfriend would be home soon and she would drive me to the hospital. I felt embarrassed to call an ambulance because my testicles hurt. After I told the emergency responder this, she then told me that she would call me again in 10 minutes to make sure I was being driven to the hospital. I then put down the phone and went back to vomiting on our carpet. Again, after the pain had gone away for a bit, I checked my phone and saw that my girlfriend just responded with laughing emojis. I tried to call her again, but as expected, she declined. She texted me that this wasn't the time to play games, and she then told me that if I texted or called her again, she would block my number. I tried calling her again, but she declined. When I tried calling her a second time, I realized she'd blocked me. I went back to curling up on the floor and now I started shivering. At this point, I didn't care about being embarrassed, so I just called emergency services again and asked for an ambulance. It felt like an eternity, but the ambulance eventually came and rushed me to the hospital. I don't remember much of the surgery since I was sedated, but the doctor informed me that I had a torsion and that I was fortunate to reach the hospital in time. I checked my phone and saw the missed calls and messages my girlfriend left me. In summary, she came home from clubbing and smelled the mess in our apartment. When she saw the vomit on our carpet, she got mad and tried searching the apartment to find me. When she realized I wasn't there, only then did it hit her that I was actually being serious. I just texted her which hospital I was staying in and my room number and then went to sleep. I woke up the next morning and saw my girlfriend sleeping on a couch next to my bed. After she woke up, she started bombarding me with apologies. She thought I was joking, that I was trying to ruin their night, etc. I didn't have the energy to argue, so I just kept quiet. I was beyond hurt by what she did, and I wanted to break up with her then and there. Why would somebody ignore messages where their partner is begging them to come home? Not only that, she stayed in the club until 3am and didn't even consider going home to check on me. She stayed with me in the hospital for the remaining two days I was there and did take good care of me, but I was still beyond angry at her. Ever since coming home yesterday, I've been wanting to dump her, but at the same time, I feel like she genuinely thought I was joking and made a mistake. I feel conflicted and don't know how to proceed in this situation. Am I the idiot if I dumped her? Am I overreacting? How would you guys navigate this mess? Edit, just to clarify, no, I never had an issue with her going out in the first place or pulling pranks to get her home from a night out. Former paramedic here, dude, when you're in that level of pain, don't call your damn girlfriend. Call emergency services. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Oh, and not the idiot, but your girlfriend is. Even if she thought you were joking, you deserved a phone call. Your partner should be worried about you versus why are you ruining my night? Have you ever done this before? She should have called to confirm whether something was or was not wrong when you said hospital. I would really consider going to continue this relationship if you did. She prioritized partying over a phone call, heard the hospital and still blocked you, and was planning on yelling about the mess at home. I wish you well in your healing. Yeah, given all that, I would never be able to rely on her again for anything. This incident would always be in the back of my mind, and I would assume that if anything bad happens, I'm all on my own. It's not much of a relationship if that's the case. Please realize that this is not someone who cares for you on an equal level. So my twin brother and his wife, sister-in-law, had a baby boy recently, and they chose the name Everest for their son. I knew the name prior to my nephew's birth, but nobody else did, and when my parents and siblings learned the new name, they were really not okay. At first, they thought it was a joke and asked for my nephew's real name, and then, when my brother told them Everest was the real name, they acted like he'd grown five heads. Shocked, horrified, and angry were very clear. They didn't actually say anything else then. 
but that might be due to sister-in-law's family also being present. The next time we were all together, they couldn't wait to jump on my brother and sister-in-law for giving my nephew such a crazy name. My brother told them the name was the name and nothing they said would change it. They asked sister-in-law how she could do that to their grandson and nephew, that he didn't need to be burdened by her family's strangeness. The reason they said this is sister-in-law and her family all have more unusual names. She told me that it goes back at least three generations, now four, and that she always loved her name and the names in her family, and she always gravitated to those kind of names. My brother always liked unusual names too, and we're alike in that way. Maybe it's a twin thing, lol. My brother made the rest of our family leave. They expected me to go with them, but I stayed. This shocked them more. Apparently, they've annoyed the crap out of my brother in the last few weeks, and he decided to block them for a while. Sister-in-law also blocked them because she was getting a lot of harassment from them, and it's very clear they blame her alone for the name. The rest of the family asked me to join them for dinner, and this dinner was about how crazy my brother was for allowing this and how sister-in-law was awful for doing this to my nephew. They mentioned how they sent several messages to both about the name being downright cruel. I chimed in and said talking crap about the name and blaming sister-in-law for the name isn't doing what they think it is. They won't have a grandson or nephew if they don't learn to keep their opinions to themselves and apologize for being so cruel to sister-in-law. They told me I should be on their side and imagine if we get a little pixie or fairy next or what if we get a wave or something dumb like that. Because knowing sister-in-law's family, it's likely. They told me I wasn't thinking of my nephew at all. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your family sounds absolutely insufferable. Also, honestly, I was expecting way worse than Everest. Like, that is actually an established name. Where the heck do they think the name Mount Everest comes from? It was legit someone's last name, George Everest. And using an established last name as a first name is really common. Honestly, I love the name choice. They need to be very careful of becoming your nephew's first bullies because if they keep talking crap about his name, it will get back to him eventually. How do they think he's going to feel about grandma and grandpa talking badly about him or his mom or his other grandparents? And be prepared for your family to do petty crap like refusing to say the kid's name or try to give him a nickname that's just something normal and in general continue to be rude about it. Continue sticking up for your brother, sister-in-law and nephew because there's nothing wrong with the name they chose. The worst I can come up with is Fit the Best Everest from an old doggy double glazing firm advert years ago. Harlot is a stupid choice, but that should be obvious. Just like Chardonnay, with two R's and an E at the end, spelling correct as per their birth certificate, or Colon are not to my taste, and likely most, but Everest is a good, strong, left field, but not wacko name. Your parents sound like they look for things to be upset about. I, a 26-year-old female, moved into a small apartment block two weeks ago. I've been busy setting up the place, furniture, and everything else. The afternoon I moved in, one of my neighbours came up to the steps, each apartment has a little front area, and mine faces the car park. She introduced herself as a single mom with a preschool-aged daughter and gave me a small succulent to say welcome. I was very appreciative, said thank you, and we spoke for a few minutes. I work three days from home, and I'm usually home in the evening after work and at night. This neighbour has started showing up a lot. I can generally hear her approaching with her daughter and they'll show up with a painting or something the daughter has made to give me. It's nice, but I prefer to keep to myself, and often I'm in my baggy tee or not dressed for visitors. I have to make myself presentable in under a minute with no notice. In this latest instance, they showed up around 7pm. The daughter had made some kind of drawing and wanted to drop it off. I'd had a long day, I was in a giant sweater, looking a mess but insanely comfy, eating ice cream on the couch and watching a film. I saw them through the window and had to quickly jump up, put on shorts and greet them at the door. Said thank you as always, but the daughter wanted to come in and see what I was watching. Nothing terrible, just a bit too grown up for a preschooler. I politely said, look, thank you, but I'm really not in the mood tonight and could they please leave? My neighbour responded, but she's just a kid, it'll only be a few minutes. She loves making things to show you. I said, look, I'm child-free by choice. Can you please leave? Thank you and good night. They haven't been back since, but they left a note in my mailbox explaining I was rude, her daughter was upset and cried, and they'd be open to an apology. I haven't responded, but I don't want to apologize. Am I the idiot for turning them away? Not the idiot. Unannounced visitors are the worst, especially when there's no valid reason for the surprise visit. She's just a kid. 
This means absolutely nothing and I don't care what your age is. I said no. You were neighborly. That's good. Great. They don't understand normal social boundaries. I bet this woman is trying to befriend you so she can easily say, Oops, I have an emergency. Could you watch my child? To her friend in the building. That's precisely where this is headed. Keep your distance if you don't want to end up either as the unwilling babysitter or making a phone call to CPS because she's abandoned her kid on your doorstep. Not the idiot for turning them away and no need for an apology. That's the mom's way of building an entitlement doorway that leaves you open to owing the mom something. Clearly a position you don't want to find yourself in. Update, I've really taken all this advice on board. I will speak to my neighbour in person in the morning, not a note reply, and say I'm sorry for my choice of words. Still, boundaries need to be in place and they cannot keep showing up unannounced. I don't plan for it to be combative, just human to human. I should have said something from the beginning, but that is neither here nor there. However she decides to respond, that's what it is.